And there's so much more to do, you know, education, workforce, addiction, infant mortality, poverty. We just can't get it all. We can't get it all right. I believe the state of Ohio is stronger today than it's been in a generation. We are proud to be Ohioans. We are more hopeful. We are more united. And we have set a course for others to follow. Ohio is back. And Ohio is strong again, ladies and gentlemen. And Governor John Kasich holding his final State of the State address in his hometown of Westerville last night. As you heard, he touched on a wide range of topics ranging from guns to health care and jobs in the state. Dr. Mark Kasich director for the Political Science Center at Cedarville University. He joins us live from Cedarville this morning. Thanks so much for taking your time to be with us. What did uh, you think of that speech, first and foremost? It was an interesting speech. I mean, I think a little bit unexpected. Uh, listening to it, it felt more like a farewell address, you know, sort of his goodbye to Ohio almost, uh, not like he has another 10 months in office. And so it's pretty light on policy details and much more sort of big picture. Here are my values and here's what I think is important. I know that the one thing he said even yesterday morning, kind of previewing this speech, was that it would be, quote, odd. Did he de de deliver on that? Yeah, yeah it was definitely odd. I think he delivered on that for sure. Uh, it was unusual, like I said, not a lot of policy detail. I honestly think it sets him up more as a presidential candidate in 2020 than it does for his last year in Ohio. And so I think in that way, it's a very forward-looking speech, but not necessarily an Ohio-centric speech. I know that that is obviously the speculation, is that there could be a potential run for the White House coming. Um, as far as laying that groundwork, what do you think may have been the key telling points that that is where he uh, he's thinking is maybe moving towards? Yeah, if you listen to his tone, it's very moderate. Uh, it's very uh, bipartisan. It's almost uh, sort of a very in-between, middle-of-the-road sort of approach to things. I think he may be setting himself up to run as an independent, maybe as a very, very moderate Republican. Uh, I think he's maybe being a little bit naive in that process, but I think he's sort of trying to get as far away from Trump and the Democrats simultaneously as he can. Now, we do know, as we mentioned at the very beginning, one of the things he spoke to were uh, the guns, gun control. Uh, as far as you mentioned the moderate tone, who is he appealing to at this point? I think he's going to try to try to sort of go right in between the Republicans and the Democrats. I mean, historically, Republicans have been very opposed to gun control. Ohio is a very strong uh, gun rights state in a lot of ways. And so I try to appeal to some Democrats potentially. But he didn't give us enough specifics to know exactly what he would support or would not support. And so, to some degree, he's probably leaving this up to the General Assembly. Uh, when you go so moderate, do you risk losing your Republican base? Yeah. <laughs> you risk losing everything. I think it's a great question. Uh, I think even based on his last presidential run, there's not a lot of evidence to me that there's this sort of army of moderate people out there just desperately uh, waiting for someone like John Kasich to fill the void. I think he may be hoping that that's the case, but I'm not sure that it's actually true. Now, you did point out the fact that he does still have 10 months left in office, and this seemed more like a farewell right. speech. Historically, what is kind of the point right. of the state of the state? Yeah, usually it's to set an agenda for the next year. I mean, you basically try to lay out your plans, what you want to accomplish. You have some specific policy proposals, some specific ideas you'd like to achieve. Sort of a, of a beginning working address with the, with the uh, General Assembly. You know, last night I think we heard a discussion of a park named after Jesse Owens. Outside of that, there really isn't much policy detail. And so in that sense, it really was as odd as you said the governor promised. Now, moving forward, what does this do for the gubernatorial candidates as they're looking at uh, you know, maybe some areas that they can jump on? Yeah, I mean, surely they will probably use this as a little bit of grist for their campaign mills coming up. Uh, but in another way, you know, it, it's such an, a non-typical political speech. You know, not, not a lot of red meat out there, not a lot of strong rhetoric. And so I'm not sure there will be a whole lot for the uh, Republican candidates to disagree with or the Democratic candidates. And probably they'd, they'd like to move forward without Kasich as opposed to involving him in their campaigns right now. Well, definitely some moments that I think had a lot of people scratching their heads. Thanks so much for helping us uh, break down the big moments from last night's State of the State. Dr. Mark Caleb Smith from C